The harness we're going to use is a BHA 7552 or a 70 7552 if you're going Metra. It has a black ground, a yellow power, an orange illumination, a red accessory 12 volts. There is a blue amplifier turn on or amplified antenna turn on depending on the car. And your eight speaker wires in four pairs, the white driver, the gray passenger, the green driver's rear, and the purple passenger rear. Solids are positive, stripes are negative. But what's missing from this harness is the three steering wheel control wires that are typically going to be in here. That is why I recommend buying two of these so that you can remove those three wires and pin them into this as opposed to cutting into the factory harness. You don't need a fancy pin tool to remove these. Really, you need a razor blade. As you can see here, these three cuts to remove these wires because this is really a pain in the butt to depin. When you cut the little notches into these, these will just pull out. Now, as I said, you need three. This has that amplifier turn on that may not be in the car, and this could be your third one. I'm gonna plug this into the car real quick and check. Now to do that, just simply plug this in, look at this pin location, we'll get it on the other side if there's a wire there. Obviously you're gonna need to keep it, but in our case there wasn't a wire there. I can remove this and use it. Cut a slight slit, slide it right out. Now we have the three wires that we're gonna need for our steering wheel controls. I haven't showed you them yet, so don't feel like you've missed something. Let's figure out what those are gonna be. To get that information, because we're using the Maestro SW, it is going to be in the software we use to flash this. Opening the box, we have the little steering wheel control interface. It shows you where to go to download the software to your laptop, both Windows or Mac. It comes with the USB flashing dongle, the pigtail to go into the back of the radio. There are two wires on it, a blue with a yellow stripe, which is for Kenwood and JVC, and the eighth inch style, which is for basically everybody else. The harness here has little teeth that you can pry up. You don't have to break anything, cut anything, and you can slide out that blue yellow wire, put it back in the box if you like. The blue will plug into the blue connector here, just like this. The second harness is gonna be for power and to hook up to these wires. And there's a bunch of wires on here. It has very similar plug as the blue. So it, there will be a couple wires we won't need. We can remove them. If you already downloaded Weblink, launch it. If not, do that first. Plug in your connector. In this case, my computer has a USB-C. So I have a USB-C adapter for it. Plug the brain in. You will need the year, make, and model of the vehicle to do this, as well as you need to know what type of radio you're using. This is a 2018 Nissan Frontier and it has the five inch color display. They're gonna show you what the steering wheel controls look like. If they match up, select next, ILX W650. The nice thing about the iData connection is we can now go in and program our steering wheel control buttons to do anything we want simply by clicking on it and choosing from our drop down menu. This is the flash page. This will go over and make sure that all your information that you've chosen is correct. And if it is, select flash. It'll take a second. It'll upload that information to our steering wheel control interface and then select download install guide. It's not actually gonna download it, it's just gonna open it up in the computer from your desktop. On this, it'll show you the year, make, and model of the vehicle along with all the information that you just fed it. It'll give you a schematic of the unit itself. The reason why this is helpful is that if you do decide to do any depinning and you keep the wires, this will tell you where those go if you need to put them back in. As we scroll down, it tells us the wires that we're going to be using, which is the purple red, the pink red and the black white. You'll also be using the accessory and ground. So we'll be using five wires to do this installation. And then it will show you a picture of the radio connection. Over here, it tells you the connector, which is A, there's only one connector, and then the pin out of where those are located. In this case, we will be using 16, six, and 15. So 16 and 15 are located next to one another on the bottom of the plug, and six is located right above 15. It also tells 
tells us the colors of wire, there's a light green, a violet, and an orange that our wires will be connected to. Now we have three wires here, and naturally I chose these three wires for a specific reason. The blue-white I'm going to use for my black-white wire on here, which is ground. And then I have a light green, which is purple-red, and then a pink-red. Those will be the green and the green-black. I don't like to look at this and try to figure out here on the bench. I want to find that first wire, which is pin six, which is gonna be violet, because once I know that, I'll be able to move forward. Now, most of the time in the Nissan, that pin six is located right here next to the red wire. So that's a good place to start. Make sure that that is pin six, in fact. Well, this is one of those instances where the information that we have for color doesn't match the colors that are in the harness. That's not to say that they aren't the right wires, they just might have the wrong colors. In that case, you want to make sure you just use the pin configuration for the install because the pins are gonna be the same no matter what the color is. So we'll add in pin six. Pin 15 is located right beneath it. Make sure when putting these pins in to check the opposite side, this side, when you're pushing the wire through, especially on this plug, it has a habit of going into the wrong hole. And then located next to that be this. To verify that those three wires, because the colors weren't right, I decided to do a twist and tape. A twist and tape is simply that. I twist the wires together, I put some tape over them so I can plug everything in to verify functionality. Our radio is sitting right here. If I come over and I work the volume control and I look at the radio, I can see that it is working the volume. Test other buttons like mode, just to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. And in this case they are. That means those three wire positions were correct, even though the color was wrong. Now we can move on to our next line round of testing, which is this harness, which is gonna be our backup camera and reverse trigger. Metro makes this harness here, which is the AXBUCS-NI326V. It's a lot of harness numbers. And a lot of the times when dealing with Nissan, you just try to find something that will plug in. If it actually works, that's a bonus. But you can always repin it to get it to do what you want. In this case, there is wiring on the other side where the camera should be, and it is their standard wire colors. Factory cameras are gonna use six volts. They're not a 12 volt. And they give you this little 12 to six volt adapter. Make sure to use it. Don't try to power up the factory camera without it, or you will be replacing the factory camera. There's a blue red wire and that goes to the red wire in this harness that is for the backup camera. And then it'll say on this little flag right here, camera power, six volts. There's a second red wire in this harness, which is for the steering wheel adapter. The leftover end is a blue, white, and a black. Those are gonna need power. For this, we're gonna use our CCTV tester. It has a 12 volt output. You can use the 12 volts that are on this plug that you had to power this up, and you can use the radio that you're gonna put in as the tester if you want. In this case, we like to test it by hand first, and we can see here we have a functioning camera. We can also see that it is a some kind of a handle cam. It's mounted off-center, which is not the end of the world. It's just the, the, they have to be made aware that when retaining factory cameras, sometimes they are not going to be in the same place they were on the factory screen because the factory screen will actually crop and move the image. Anytime you go to replace a radio and there is a factory cam, you can look in the back. The camera is not dead center. Chances are good it's going to be off on your aftermarket screen to the left or to the right, depending on where the camera is positioned. If the camera has adjustable backup lines on it, you can then use those to center the camera back up so that it is straight according to those lines. Also on this harness, we have this green purple wire here. This should be our backup wire. And to test that, we have a digital multimeter. One end to ground. You put it in reverse, you get voltage. In this case, we got 11.8 volt. Put it into neutral, and it goes away. That's telling us that this, in fact, is the reverse trigger. There's a lot of testing that has to be done on one of these Nissans, and that is why we plug that airbag wire back in, because we have to turn the this on several times during this installation. I'll meet you over at the bench where we'll dress this harness up and remove any excess wiring we don't need and also connect up that 12 volt to 6 volt adapter.
crap. Now the task is to blend all of this stuff together. And I like to do that by removing as much of it that I don't need as possible. We'll start with the backup camera harness. Remove all of the tape. This has a pink and a pink blue. These are data wires that aren't needed. This would be for specific steering wheel control applications, this not being one of them. You simply just pull on these and they will come out. Next is this giant ground bundle here. Remove the heat shrink and there is one ground that comes off all by itself. Remove all of those excess ground wires and then this whole thing will just come off. You can throw it in the trash. Place the shrink wrap that you just removed. Grab the 12 to 6 volt adapter. First wire we're going to hook up is the blue red which is our 6 volt output to our red wire. Twist the wires nice and tight like before. Make sure there's no wire sticking out from underneath. And that's it. Let the heat pull the solder into the wire. For wiring up a harness, there's a combination of tape, no tape. In this case, we're gonna start with isolating this out to itself. Keep in mind that this is gonna be plugging into the back of the radio, so this harness doesn't need to be all that long. Starting at the plug side, what we're making is a T of just the power wires all to length. I like to put a little piece of heat shrink over that end there. Add in a couple zip ties at the end down here towards the base where the camera wire is. Not too many, just enough to kind of hold everything in place. So I'll just be using two. I want this wire to float because it's going to go off on its own and not be part of this. That is a finished cable. And what it's comprised of is two ground wires, the reverse trigger, which is this green purple, and the blue white, not to be confused with an amplifier turn on, it is going to be an accessory. So that will hook up to our red wire out of our factory harness. We just want it to have power when the key is on. Moving over here to the factory harness, pull off all the twisting tape that we did, grab our iData connection. You can cut this to length as much or as little as you want. I'm gonna want this to kind of sit down low in the dash out of the way. Keep in mind that this is gonna plug in the back of the radio. You don't have to go too crazy on this. Using the same exterior Tessa tape, bundle this all together. Two of our main harnesses ready to go. I can attach the accessory wires from the two of them together along with the ground wires. In some Nissans, this black wire, there's nothing there. And you'll need a ground wire. In some cases, it is a low voltage wire. In either case, for our installation, we're gonna need to remove the factory brackets off of this radio, which is gonna add an extra ground plane to the radio. So we don't need to worry about that particular thing. But if you are worried or concerned, add in a secondary ground wire to this that you can take off to that big bar behind the radio. Some dash kits are all plastic, in which case, I do recommend doing a secondary ground coming off of this black wire. This I've already got built. I'm gonna add in my main harness, soldering in the ground in the accessory, as well as the three wires that I've added to go to the steering wheel control over here. With those three wires connected, soldered, and insulated, on the Nissan plug, there is an orange wire. This orange wire has illumination. We're using an Alpine. An Alpine does not have an illumination wire, even though on it, there is this giant orange wire coming off of it. The orange wire is for backup or reverse trigger on this radio, so we need to cap this off or remove it. I like to just cap that one off. On the Alpine harness, you have the eight speaker wires, which are identical to the colors we mentioned earlier. We have a blue with a white stripe, which is the amplifier turn on. You have a blue wire, which is the amplified antenna turn on. There is a yellow with a blue stripe, which is the parking brake wire. The orange that we just talked about is reverse trigger, a yellow constant 12 volts, a black ground, and a red accessory. And they all have different lengths and they're all kind of goofy. What I like to do is stretch out all of them except for my constant 12 volts because it has a big fuse on it to the same length that of the remote turn on wires and cut them all to length if you need longer reverse trigger or parking brake keep those out first wire i like to deal with is the ground then the red accessory wire the next wire I want to work with is the orange white to my green purple. Once the solder cooled down, you can add on the heat shrink. Don't do it until the solder has cooled though, especially on the ground where you have all those wires. That's gonna be a really 
a hot bundle and you don't want to shrink the heat shrink prematurely. For this, we'll be running speed wire up into the dash, which is a nine conductor wire, and it is gonna connect on this end here. I like to run my remote turn on wire all the way through the harness and have it meet up with this as opposed to have it separate. That way it can hook up to that nine conductor wire. That leaves the speaker wires that we're gonna just cap off because we're not using, and the constant 12 volt wire. I'm gonna shorten that up just a little bit. It's still gonna stay long. I'm gonna take this off as a pigtail off to the side. And just like that, all our connections are made. I have these pulled off to the side. They'll go off in their own little bundle. Straighten these out as much as you can, and we will tape up the harness. We're not gonna cover up the solder points. We're gonna put a different type of tape over those. We wanna be able to get to those if we ever need to. And if we tape up the whole harness, we have to pull half of the tape back to get to it. The harness is all set and done. Let's go through it real quick. The backup camera retention is located here. The main power is here. Steering wheel control. This will plug into this extension cable here, so this will be long enough. Thank you to Alpine. Steering wheel control will plug into the back of the radio. Power harness. The wires coming off of the harness, the speaker wires are all insulated and capped off. These wires are gonna be what our amplifier are going to connect to. And this guy is all set and ready to get into the car. The last piece of the harness puzzle is this, which is an antenna adapter, which is the BAA36. It has this little blue wire here. Initially looking at the radio, we saw that it did not have this turn on. This just pulls out, and now this is all set and ready to go into the car. Because it's a standalone simple thing like this, and we still have some work to do on the radio, do yourself a favor, go plug it into the car right now.